Well, then I'll do those introductions. So I'm going to welcome to the stage here uh, Chris Lefebvre and Eileen Graham. Uh, I'm going to read here. Having not, I haven't prepared for this. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to just I, I'm off the cuff introduce Chris, who's currently the regional supply chain manager for Staples North America, where he directs the strategic and operational activities of the Western Canadian e-commerce fulfillment center and transportation teams. Uh, just as an aside. Uh, and I'm sure Chris will speak to this. In my time at uh, Calgary Economic Development on the board, there one of the, one of the things that was uh, also a, uh, a jewel in the crown of the, uh, the local Calgarian economy is the transportation and logistics, logistics, sorry, logistics business. And so this is this will be uh, this will be a great address, uh, very on point. Uh, Chris is a graduate. Uh, he started his career at, in in '95 with Canada Post. He's a graduate with a degree in operations supply chain management from SAFE and quality management from the University of Manitoba. Eileen is currently the human resources business specialist at Staples North American Supply Chain. Uh, she provides HR support to Calgary and Lethbridge, uh, includes distribution, transportation, and furniture installation teams. Eileen started her career in 2008 and is a graduate with, the human resources, with a human resources certification from UC and a bachelor's degree in tourism management from the Vancouver and Island University. So welcome. Yeah, thank you, Lou. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, whatever it is. Um, I want to thank again Nicole for inviting us and her team. Um, and, and Chris, of course. I sit with Chris on an advisory board for, uh, for new immigrants to Canada. So um, I'm very excited about that. Very excited about the opportunities that, that we get to share with, with folks new to this, new to this great country. Um, so I'm Chris Lefebvre. I, uh, I manage the Staples online business. So I'll give you a little bit about how business has shifted for us in the last, you know, sort of 15, 20 years. We all remember back in the 90s, all these big box stores going up, you know, Future Shop, Staples. The bigger the building, the more we would sell, right? Um, so that, that was it. Everybody would go to these big box stores like Staples, huge centers, and they would buy everything and they'd go home. Since 2002, online sales have grown three quarters, of, said, well, three quarters faster than retail sales. So than your typical, your typical retail store. The sales with online have grown so fast that we're now expanding our businesses. Um, consumers are becoming increasingly frustrated with having to get up, get out of the house, and go buy something at a store. Everybody wants to buy something online. I don't know how many of you have ordered something online recently, but I order online all the time. It's highly convenient, um, and it comes to your house or your business usually you know, within 24 hours. So what do we do at Staples? Well, we don't manage anything to do with retail. What I do at Staples is I manage all of the online business for Western Canada. Okay? So if you're a customer, and I'm going to do a shameless uh, corporate plug, if you're a customer that logs on to www.staples.ca, and you enter your postal code from Winnipeg to Vancouver, it's typically coming out of our facilities here in Alberta, okay? Which is great, and there's a reason why it comes out of Alberta, because we're strategically located to be able to hit the markets throughout the West, right? We ship a lot of high-value electronics, we back it up to Vancouver, so we've got, you know, we're, we're fortunate enough that our, that our customers in the Vancouver market, um, you know, can still afford to buy uh, high-value electronics. Uh, and then we ship a lot of stuff to Winnipeg. So we're strategically located. And you're going to see that, and I think for those of you who heard Sean's presentation yesterday, you talked about the excitement around supply chain, the excitement around logistics in Calgary. Prior to joining Staples, I managed the large container terminal in Vancouver. And one of the difficulties we had, one of, one of the difficulties we had with the customers I supported, Home Depot, Sears, Callaway Golf, lots of big customers, was we, we can't find land in the Vancouver market and we're having a hard time finding labor in the Vancouver market. So a lot of that stuff is shifting, and we're seeing, we're seeing some of the growth that we're seeing here in, in Calgary. Um, if an ocean liner can get their containers here to Calgary and offload it and they're back to the, back to the, uh, to the ocean liner within 10 days, you know, there's, there's no penalties typically. Um, so we're seeing some growth there. Um, with, with the online sales, of course, we're seeing a lot of growth. You, you can log onto our website and select over 100,000 different items. And the customer who orders that doesn't care that it came out of Calgary or anywhere else. They just want it delivered to them the next day in perfect order. So you can get everything from diapers to water to cereal bars and everything else. We want our customers, much like all of our other competitors, Amazon, Walmart.ca, those kind of things. I shouldn't have said those. 
<laughs> we want our competitors, we, we don't want our customers, part of me, to log off our website, right? And that's what we do. That's what the online business is. But the online business doesn't just run with me. I, I, I literally don't do much. But I've got a tremendous team. Um, everything from procurement professionals, supply chain uh, purchasers, demand planning, forecasters, pickers, packers, shippers, quality control, process excellence. It's supply chain, if nothing else, it truly is a link. If you look at the length of a chain, supply chain is that. If one link is broken, the whole thing is weak. When I, when I started in this business, you heard that I started with Canada Post. I was in the military for several years. And after several deployments all over the world, my wife, uh, my wonderful wife, we packed up our <laughs> 24 years. Um, thank you. We packed up our one bedroom apartment and we headed to Calgary in the U-Haul. I had nothing, right? My transferable skills, for all you folks looking for work and worrying about whether or not it's transferable, I was bomb disposal and mine detection. <laughs> right? Right? Oh, that's the same yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but it's not exactly something that I'm going to find in the labor market here in civilian life. Okay? So that was my transferable skill, but what I did was different. I searched for a company that I thought would be awesome to work for, right? And I searched for that company and I applied for a job I was prepared to do. Here's what I did. I applied for a job and I took a job and I held that job for a long time that was a delivery driver Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You know, not, not optimal. I would have preferred full time, right? I got a new wife and, and we're, trying to, we're trying to make it. Um, but what it did for me was it opened up so many doors. You know, Canada Post turned out to be, you know, a company that not only eventually gave me full time, but promoted me to supervisor and superintendent and plant manager and all these great things, but they supported all of my education, right? So if you find a great company, and, and, and Staples and so many of these other great companies, they support tuition reimbursement. So that's my first tip uh, before I hand it to Aileen. Um, oh, sorry, pardon me. Aileen is, uh, Aileen Gray is my HR manager, wonderful, very talented, and, uh, and she's also going to help me because I've got a sore throat. To to um, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Tuition reimbursement. So you stay, in a, you stay in a company that you know you're excited about. You know, um, you apply for a job. So when we and Aileen will talk to you a lot about um, you know the filters that we have. You know, our talent acquisition folks are based out of Miami and Houston. And they really don't know anything about the Calgary market. My head office is based out of Boston. Um, you know, one of, one of the guys that I was speaking to, he didn't even know where Alberta was. Right? But that's fine. Um, but all these folks do is they filter a certain, certain criteria. We tell them, part-time driver, forklift trained, wants to do this. Right? Once you get in the door, and if you're, like I said, if you're prepared to do that job, that's when you guys knock it out. You get in front of that hiring board or hiring manager, a lean or one of my managers, you know, that's just, you know, that's when you show them how awesome you are, right? Because we already know you're qualified. You're in there for the interview because you're qualified to be there. Now you've got to knock the socks off the people you're talking to. And that's what we find when we bring people in. If they're excited, they're jazzed up, they know about the company, um, you know, they're, they're most of the people we want to be with. We're a solid team that, uh, I think Lou had alluded to it earlier, that, you know, if there's somebody in, within the organization that doesn't fit, you know, that, that quickly does something to the rest of the team. So, so we work hard at that. Um, so I've been fortunate. And the other thing is, you know, talk highly about your former employers, right? And be proud of what you've done. Um, I've been through several different companies in the last 20 years now. But every one of them has been amazing for my transformation. Every one of them I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunities that they've afforded to me. And, and, and I speak of highly of all of them all the time. You may have been wrong in some job, um, but the employer typically has treated you pretty well. So with that, we're going to run through a few slides, and uh, then we'll take questions. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I can actually attest to Chris not doing much. I'm in the office right now. Sorry. He really doesn't do much. I answered the door. That's about it. Um, so, as Chris said, my name is Aileen. I'm the HR Business Specialist for Stables here in Calgary. Um, I can really help you guys, I think, because I have a really good perspective on what it's like to transition from another industry. 
Um, I myself, my background was 12 years in a luxury hotel chain. I was a manager. I was in the operations. I was on the floor with my team doing all the dirty work with all of our guests. I've dealt with celebrities. I've dealt with royalty. You name it, I've seen it. Um, at 12, fast forward 12 years later, and I realized, well, it's okay, um, that I had matured and I no longer wanted to work 60, 80 hour work weeks that was required when you're in a management position in the hotel industry. It wasn't for me anymore. I wanted to settle down. I'm tired of globe trotting and all that fun stuff. So I looked for a career that was going to suit my skill set. And for me, I'm a people person. That's what I like to do. That's how I got into HR. I love working with people. I love coaching. I love training. I love helping people. So this is how I got into HR. Now, it's really hard to get into HR from a different industry. I'll be honest. It wasn't easy. My, I, but I looked at what my transferable skills were. And for me, that's being a people person. So I leveraged that. I leveraged my people skills. I used my networking skills. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> Who isn't nowadays? And I've used that to get into the industry that I'm in now. Chris isn't. I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> but actually, how I got the job at Staples is because I knew Chris. Chris was one of my clients when I worked for a company called Randstad. And we knew each other, and I helped him provide him with labor. That's how I got my job. Yeah. I wouldn't have got it otherwise. And let me expand on that. I just want to expand on that. So when I had a vacancy in the HR, I didn't necessarily need to go out and look elsewhere. I already knew somebody that I was familiar with. So this is all about networking and not shutting any doors. And it came open and I said, hey, Aileen, would you be interested in applying for our HR position? Right? And automatically what I was able to do was get her to sort of, you know, the, 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 the second stage of the interview process. You know, then her bosses and HR, wherever they work, um, I don't know if they where they work. I have no Chicago. idea. Chicago. Um, then they took it from there. But I was able to get Aileen to the next step because of the character of the person she is, right? And how well she treated and how well she treated me. She treated me more like somebody she cared about as opposed to a client. So um, I, I think that was an important. Wow, that's so nice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now she's so mean to me. <laughs> Um, so I guess my main message is to you that it's so important to network. So important to network. And it's not necessarily what you know, it's who you know. So, you know, the in, right now the labor market in Calgary is really, really flooded with people looking for work. So it's not easy for you guys that are out there looking. Um, and I'm sure you've seen that and I'm sure you're frustrated with what's happening out there. But we, as the employer, can be picky as to what we're looking for. So really, what you need to do is leverage your people skills and leverage your transferable skills. So um, I'll go into some slides and show you some of the things that I'm talking about, but that's one of the, one of the main messages I want you to hear, is leverage your ne network and use your people skills to get these jobs, OK? <coughs> Oops, that's not the right button. That's the right button. There we go. Okay, so in Staples, uh, it's, it's a large company, it's global. Um, I'm sure you've seen this everywhere, but uh, some of the typical markets that we're hiring for is sales. Uh, we have a contact center, which is based out of Regina, which is now moving to Moncton. Uh, we also hire for our corporate office, and in Staples, our corporate office is actually located in Mississauga for Canada, and then for the US, it's located in Framingham in Massachusetts. Um, and then we also hire for supply chain, which specifically that's what I'm helping with. Some of the typical positions that you would see in supply chain, um, starting in our entry level positions, this is typically what we hire for, is our warehouse associates. Now our warehouse associates, they're our doers. They're, we rely on them so heavily. Um, if they're not working quickly and efficiently, and have that sense of urgency and have that attention to detail, we don't get the right items in that box to our customer, and that is not a good thing, because I'm sure you've been on the other end, and it's nothing more frustrating when you open up your box and you've got one item in there. Really frustrating to have to go through that process of sending it back. 
So we're looking for people that have it, good attention to detail and have that sense of urgency. Uh, for our warehouse associates, forklift operators, these guys are also, and women, are very critical. Um, they have to have a strong sense of safety. Um, our order pickers go up several racking levels, high up in the air, and you cannot be afraid of heights. And you need to be safe. You need to be watching out for the pedestrians in the building, and you need to be watching out for yourself. So we're looking for people that are not afraid of heights. We're looking for people that aren't afraid to tell other people if they're being unsafe. Because if someone is unsafe, someone can die. And I say that uh, to scare you because that's exactly what can happen. Um, we, we have had injuries, we have had people not paying attention to what they're doing, and this is when we retrain them and we make sure that everybody's on the same page. So one of our interview questions is asking people, if you saw somebody that was doing un something unsafe, how would you handle that situation? And one of the most frustrating things that I hear is people aren't afraid to say something. They say, oh, well, I would just ignore it and I would continue doing my job. I don't want to cause a problem. Someone could lose their life. I want you to cause a problem. So that's one thing, another tip to, if you're looking for a supply chain job, something to think about. Uh, we also hire for warehouse supervisors, and these are the people that are running the shift. These are people people. I'm looking for people that um, want to listen to their teammates. They want to collaborate. Um, they care about their team. That's another thing. We also want people that can handle stress. The job can get stressful. We have deadlines we have to meet to get our products out to our customers. I don't want a supervisor on the floor that's going to be yelling at their teammates. We all work together for one goal. We also hire delivery drivers. These guys go out and deliver the products to our customers. And we want these people to be extremely customer-centric. They need to be working with our customers. They're the face of our company. Um, so that's another very critical role to um, Staples itself. And then lastly, transportation supervisors. And again, these are the people that are managing the schedule. They need to be um, looking after their team and making sure that we're meeting their needs. All right, so now this is a fun slide with a bunch of things that are going to pop up. <laughs> I'll wait for them all to come up for you. Um, but basically, these are, you can see in supply chain how it's a very exciting career. There's lots of different paths that you can look at. It's not just necessarily the warehouse side of things, but you can also go into things being a forecaster, looking at inventory control, demand planning, process excellence, customer service. That's an important piece as well. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities within supply chain if you are looking for a new industry to get a part of. And I talked about transferable skills earlier. This is probably the top one for me when I'm listening to people during the interview process. I'm looking to understand, do you have a sense of urgency? I don't want you walking slowly to go pick an item from the shelf. I want to know that you're moving quickly and efficiently. If we need something, we're meeting deadlines. We have to get orders out at a certain time. There is no if, ends, or buts about it. And if we're behind, a customer suffers. And then our business suffers. So it's important that you can move with a sense of urgency. Um, we all come from different backgrounds and cultures. And that's probably one of the biggest things I see in the building is some cultures tend to move a little bit more slowly. So in Canada, we are looking for people that can move quickly, okay? And that's one thing that I really enjoy about being part of Staples is we have a very diverse team. Every continent is represented in our building, and that's very exciting to be a part of. Uh, we also have uh, some diversity when it comes to people with um, that may have some other challenges or maybe perhaps physically disabled. Uh, we did work with an associate who has since moved on, uh, but she was deaf. And that was an amazing thing to see all of our teammates working together and, and communicating with her, because as you can imagine, someone that's deaf, it's a little bit challenging. So we had a whiteboard out, and she would write things down, and she taught us a few signs, and that's how we did it. So there's, there's lots of opportunity for you. Uh, we're looking for people that can multitask. 
We want people that can do a variety of things at once. Again, it's all about being efficient. We're looking for productivity. We want people that can work well under pressure. We've, again, we've got those deadlines that we have to meet. We're looking for people that have really good time management skills. We trust our team. We give them all of their tasks. They know what they need to, to get done. And we trust them to decide what's the best way to do it. Because guess what? They're the ones that are doing it every day. We're also looking for people that have good team building skills. You, you're there to do a job, but we all work together and we rely on one another in order to get through the shift. It's, again, it's a production line. Um, so from production, it goes into our quality control. Our quality control team is looking through the boxes and making sure that everyone's picked the right items. Then it goes on to our loading team. Our loading team loads everything up and puts them on the trucks. And then we have our drivers that go out and deliver the product. And we rely on one another to meet all of our deadlines and work together to get things done efficiently. So to take you through what our process looks like when you want to apply for a position at Staples, uh, you do need to apply online at globalcareers.staples.ca. Uh, we do use in um, Taleo as our um, talent application program. Um, now, I'll also tell you, because Staples is a global company, we actually have a recruitment company, a talent acquisition company called Cielo, and they're the ones that actually screen all our resumes. Um, and to give you an idea of what a challenging market it is right now and how highly competitive it is, uh, we posted a position the other day for a warehouse associate level two, so we were looking for a forklift operator. And within five hours of the position being posted, we had over 100 resumes. So it's, uh, it's, it's challenging out there. So again, you know, you've been told previously that you want to make sure you have those keywords in your resume. Make sure you're going through it. Uh, I see it time and time again where people aren't reading the job description. And they're not putting down what their transferable skills are. And it's very hard for us to, to get you into Staples if you're not doing that. So do not send out a cookie cutter resume um, and screen it carefully. I've seen people that put, my objective is getting into the healthcare industry. <laughs> Pardon? No. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't work. So make sh I know it's extra work. I, I mean, just recently, well, two years ago, I, I transitioned into Staples and I remember how tough it was and redesigning my resume for every single job that I applied for. It's hard work and it's frustrating filling up those stupid online forms. I say they're stupid because they're just frustrating to go through. Um, the next process is you would have a phone interview. So if you make it through the first step, you're going to get a phone interview with Yellow, and that's the company and they're looking for certain things for us, that they have scripted questions that they're asking, and there will be some behavioral-based questions in there as well. If you do get an in-person interview, I gave you a few tips earlier, some things that we're looking for, um, mentioning you know sense of urgency, mentioning that you know you like to work part of this, a team, that you're willing to do so, um, that you have. Uh, you feel that health and safety is important to you as well. Those are things. Um, I would also recommend you take a look at the website and you look at what are Staples values. How do Staples values align with what you believe in? Um, and that will help you be successful in the interview as well. Um, next step is we do uh, potentially another interview with the... You're highly qualified. Um, but get in front of them and now, you know, just don't be intimidated and just sort of talk to them. And that's what I do. I, and that's what I do. I, I met with a mentee on for coffee on Wednesday. Um, and we just got to know each other, right? I already know how qualified he is. I have his resume, so it doesn't really matter. But, um, but it's an opportunity for you to demonstrate who you are. Um, <laughs> OK, uh, lastly, you know, of course, you get the verbal offer now. Um, we do require a background check. We are dealing with millions and millions of dollars worth of product in our warehouse. Oh, I won't give the address out now. No. <laughs> um, so we, we need to make sure that we've got reputable people in our building. 
Um, and then lastly, we would, we would hire you. And how exciting is that? Um, I, I do want to give you some other tips. I, I want to be brutally honest with you, and I don't want to depress you or anything like that. But if you are looking to get into a career in supply chain, um, and if you're transitioning from the oil and gas industry, I hate to say this to you, but one of the things that you're going to find is we're probably not going to look at you. The reason why is because as soon as the economy turns around, you're going to leave us. That's what we're thinking. And we don't want to invest the time that it takes to train you if you're going to leave. Okay, so I'm just letting you know that that's one of the things that you're going to come across. So again, this is why it's so important to leverage your network, leverage the people that you know, find out who works at Staples, get on LinkedIn, use your resources. And a couple of people have said, uh, making sure your Facebook page is clean, that's really important because I actually, Chris's old boss told me that that's what he does, is he stalks people on Facebook. And he looks for things that they're posting. Um, I do it too. So um, just be be very cognizant of what you're posting. It, it sticks with you for life. Yes, ma'am. Any suggestions for phone interview? Any suggestions for a phone interview? Like as far as what things to say? Exactly. Like uh, who you will choose. Like if you have two people, two persons, which Absolutely. Um, so she's asking for tips on what you would do for a phone interview and how you can get past that next level. Um, I'll be honest with you, supply chain isn't rocket science. We don't require a lot of education at all. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Um, so <laughs> your education, your technical skills, those aren't necessarily what's going to get you on the uh, through the first jump or poop, shall we say. Um, so really it's about selling your personality and again, highlighting those transferable skills that you have. Um, I would also highly recommend, and it's been recommended before, do your research, find out what you can from the company on their website, look at the company's values and talk about that. Talk about how you see yourself fitting into that culture. Um, I would also say that, you know, like, Something that I always listen for is somebody to tell me that they're hardworking and they're willing to do whatever it takes to get to the next level. I had to take a step down in my career. I went from a hotel manager where I was managing teams of 70 people to working as a recruiter. That's how I transitioned into HR. Um, a lot less responsibility, a lot less in pay but I needed to make that change in order to get what I needed out of my career. You just called and you received a voicemail. So will you call again? My first question. And the second question, how important the voicemail is? Like for phone, phone records, I'm not at home, sorry, you're calling and so on. You know what, that's, that's a really good question. So she was asking, um, if the recruiter gets your voicemail, are they going to call you back? That's a really tough one. It, it, it depends on how many applicants we have for the position. Um, if we have a ton and lots of people are interested, then you're probably not going to get a call back. Why um, people use you their need cell to call them. Yeah. A lot of people put their cell number on their resume, so, yeah. so they're always available. They can get somewhere quiet pretty quickly. And Chris, I, that's a very good point. Uh, one of the most frustrating things is, is people that don't answer their phone. So when you are looking for work, keep your phone on you, have the ringer turned up, and don't miss those calls. Because you're right, you could miss out on an opportunity. And when you were speaking about voicemails, um, I would say you want to have your voicemail professional, right? Give your name, blah, 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 whatever the message may be. But you don't want it. I've, I've heard rock music. Um, <laughs> I've heard swear words, all sorts of stuff on people's voicemails. So keep it professional, right? If Chris wants to talk, sorry, he's jumping in. Yeah, sorry, my, my throat's feeling better. I, I just want to add to 
if you're looking to transition to supply chain, and I completely agree with Aileen, if you put on your resume, listen, I'm just waiting until the market turns around to go back to oil and gas, those are the ones we're probably not going to look. But, but supply chain is a really exciting field, and it's very, it's very fast growing. You know, I talk about online, I talk about all the warehouses go here. So if you're really looking at making a career change in the supply chain, distribution, logistics, you name it, you know, just be honest with yourself and when you apply for the job you can, and you're prepared to stay there, you know, we'll look at everybody. So it's, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, that, that everybody sort of understands that. You just said you are going to look at everybody? No, no, no I'm going to look at everybody who's honest in their resume and their cover letter. So every, everybody, that's, everybody that's saying, listen, I'm excited about it, much like I applied in 1995 for a four-day job, I applied for that. I applied for that and then the opportunities and the doors were open to me once I joined the company. Right, but I applied for that. I, I didn't put on my I didn't put on the application, listen, I want full time work. And I want to be a supervisor right away because that's sort of what I did in the military. I applied for what was posted. And I was honest with the employer. Yes, sir. I've come across a couple of times where I've been prepared to take a strategic step back in order to kind of pivot and maybe to a new industry. But in a couple of times I've made it to the interview process and they've been up front with me that there's a little bit of a concern that maybe you're just doing it to buy your time. How do you reconcile that with an employer that you're not just, that it's not just a, a stepping stone for you and really it's a strategic move? Uh, just the way you just you just expressed it to us. Nailed it, David. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You nailed it. You, you come in front of me and, and, and I'm going to say, sorry, what's your name? Dayton. Dayton. I'm going to say, Dayton, really, here's what we're offering. I see you've got so much skill. Um, and, and you've got it in this other field. And you can say, Chris, this is what I want to do. I've researched your company. I'm passionate about supply chain, or I'm passionate about pharmaceuticals. And this is really what I want to do. I'm excited about the opportunity to join your company, right? I've automatically forgotten that you were, I don't know, whatever you were before. Um, because now I know that you care about the company, and you care about the team, and, and your own future development within the company. Thank you. Yes. I mean, you had mentioned about uh, the question and to the interview process about what would you do if you saw an employee do something on site? Yes. My question to you is, I hear it's a multiple choice question, and I was told by once a person that you always pick, go to your supervisor, that you don't handle it yourself. Is that correct? Very good question. Um, here's how I would answer that. I listen for two things. Number one, my number one preference is that you would be confident enough in yourself and have the people skills to non-confrontationally go to that person and tell them that they're doing something unsafe. The reason why that's important is because in the time that it takes you to run to a supervisor and tell someone to, that they're doing something unsafe, that person could have fallen off their piece of equipment and is now no longer with us. Okay. Just to put it in perspective, that's what I would prefer to hear. I will help you with that as an HR professional. If you're not confident in doing that, it's not It's not going to be a deal breaker for me <coughs> to say I'm going to go tell my supervisor. That's acceptable. But the time that it takes you to do that, someone could have lost their life. So I, I really would prefer that you go and speak to that person and say, hey, you know what? You really need to be wearing your harness right now. If you're not wearing your harness and you slip, then you could fall. Yeah. We have, sorry, sorry, go ahead, but we have one more question. Yeah. Um, you say, you know, you think we're going to go back to the oil and gas industry. So if, um, is that for administrative people as well? You just talk about people with degrees. And even if we know somebody who knows somebody, aren't you still going to think, yeah, but aren't they going to go back when it gets busy? No, and very good questions. Um, yes and no. So once you get your foot in the door and you're speaking to us, and simply what, as Dayton was saying, if you're expressing to us that you're committed to your career path and if you're looking for something new, if you've expressed that during the interview process, we're, we're going to believe you. But it's to get to the interview. Exactly, and that's why you have to leverage your network to get in through the door and say, hey, I've got this really great friend. She used to work in oil and gas, but she's looking for a change. I know she doesn't have a lot of experience in supply chain, but I think she would be a great fit. Because you know what? The majority of the people that we hire are referrals. Yeah. Thank you. They're and, referrals. Just the last thing a lot. Remember, apply 
for the position, right? Or interview, pardon me, for the position you're applying for. Research the company. There's so many doors that are open up. I know Excel, Staples, so many other companies. So, uh, you know, if, if you're applying for that position, be prepared to do that position because that's what they're interviewing for. I think we're done with questions, all right? We're out of time. Okay, thank you all so much for uh, listening.